you know, I, I sometimes I've, uh, I feel like an alien in a sense, because when I think about when I, when I see people pledging allegiance to a flag here in the United States, nationalism, I, I feel has always been present, but it's been especially present uh, in the past, I would say several years. Um, I think as nations enter into states of crisis, uh, nationalism seems to really go up. This fervor, this nationalistic fervor seems to really go up. And I always have felt very, um, I've always had very mixed feelings and very, I've always felt like that's a very strange notion that people are so attached. They attach their own personal individual identities to the nation, right? That I am an American or you are Irish or you are this, you are this, you know, And I think especially considering that you're talking about how recent nation states have formed, I think we have this idea that like people have been this way for all of human history, that we have identified our personal identities with this thing called the nation. Um, And that doesn't actually seem to be the case at all. That seems to be a more recent manifestation. Obviously, people were connected to their, maybe their tribe or some larger organization or group. But uh, we, we've seemed to have reached a new level of almost abstraction uh, or, or complexity when it comes to this. So, yeah, yeah, sorry. If you say something. Sure. I mean, uh, I, I want to say essentially how, how we've come to where we are. In, in... Right. Yeah, yeah. I was going to ask that. Yeah, yeah. It, it is. It, it's a kind of long term historical process. It's an ongoing process. And we tend to see it more, more when, when we have these crisis like you know Brexit and Trump and things like that then nationalism becomes much more visible then we are shocked and intellectuals in particular seem to be shocked every few few you know decades they see this you know crazy nationalism but the point is nationalism is really much, much strong when it's less visible so my point is because it, it's connected to the power of you know the organizational capacity of the nation state so in, in, after the French Revolution, and you say in, in the, uh, uh, let's say mid 19th century, it's only really a few, mostly kind of middle class people identified with the nation. There's a really good book by Eugene Weber, uh, Peasants into Frenchmen, where he shows that even in France, which was kind of the, the epitome of this nationalizing state, centralizing state, that majority of people didn't see themselves as French. Uh, as late as late 19th century, you know, early 20th century. So it mm-hmm. was still kind of middle class phenomena, uh, you know, people in Paris did see themselves, but people in, uh, you know, regions uh, in the villages still identified much more in local terms, in terms of kinship and, you know, clan and religion rather than the nation. So nationhood in that sense is a kind of a fully fledged sociological fact develops quite late, very late. Uh, uh, and it develops because of institutions of the state. So educational system, very important in that sense. High literacy rates are very important. So if you don't have a literate population, it's very difficult to kind of penetrate them ideologically. But if you put them into schools and you teach them history in a particular way and you teach them a national language, which becomes standardized and then kind of imposed. uh, And, you know, there is a reason why primary education and now secondary education in many countries is compulsory because this is not only about teaching certain skills. It is about making a, a people national. Uh, and that's what educational systems have done. And we know exactly, you know, from the late 19th century after the uh, Frank, Franco-Prussian uh, War, when French, uh, French lost that war, they devised these subjects that we all now have, you know, national history, correct curriculum and geography and, and, and language. And that, that was imposed deliberately to make, you know, people into, into loyal French subjects. Uh, so we, we see that how, you know, in the Pledge of Allegiance that you mentioned is, is also one of these mechanisms that you make young people into, you know, loyal Americans or loyal French and German and Indians and whatever. So, so in that sense, nationalism is very much, uh, uh, it has become powerful precisely because there, there's that, uh, you know, the nation state mechanism, because nation state is seen as the only legitimate and nation state, whoever is in power, uh, you know, it, it frames individuals along these lines. So, you, you know, you, you can, obviously, we all see Trump as, as kind of this excessive individual, but, you know, during the Obama years, you know, the Pledge of Allegiance was still there, you know, the inauguration of the president is still there, the nation-centric language was still there. So now we see just a kind of much more aggressive version of the same thing. So it's, yeah. this is not kind of break with the past, it's just a kind of little bit more uh, caricature of, of the existing things. Mm-hmm.